In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, the build of our LS3 powered E30 continues. Welcome to a special episode of Mighty Car Mods. We're continuing work on our LS3 powered old BMW E30. Now, uh, we got the engine in with the help of the guys at Brintec, which is awesome. It's got a transmission, it's got a few extra bits bolted to it, but there's still quite a few things missing. Things like wiring, things like a fuel system, things like fluids. And the interior. So this whole interior is gonna go. We've got a roll cage going in there that AGI is making for us. Um, we got some seats from an Evo going in there. Yeah, we do. Um, we've got our bonnet will be coming back soon that we haven't even seen yet. And our wheels, that's right, there's new wheels uh, that are getting some work done at Barrel Brothers. It's a big, big day, so let's just dive right into it. Our LS looks right at home in the engine bay of the E30, and now it's ready to make some noise. It just needs something to control the whole show. Our mate Dave is a wiring guru who has offered his expertise to help get the car running. And while he's busy sending electrons around the place, we're going to gut our smelly, cockroach infested interior. Yes, cockroaches, keep watching. Then we're going to install a half cage and some more modern buckety seats. BMW seats are coming out. Now I understand this is like an IS interior and all tartany and stuff, but very, very unsupportive and actually quite smelly. So oh. I have secured... It is smelly. Oh. It stinks, doesn't oh, it? Uh, it's been wet. That's what I call a frog's gooch, that smell. Yeah, Like absolutely. it smells very amphibious absolutely. and wet. That's my main problem with those seats. And that driver's one's a bit collapsed and yuck. So what I've actually got is some Recaros. Now these are out of an Evo 8 MR. I got a whole interior. I just wanted seats. You have to take the whole interior. And I went, Okay. Is that like $50,000 because JDM car tax is so huge now? Um, I actually bought these a few months ago because I just saw them and went, they're blue and they're mad and they're in really good condition. So I'm going to grab them. And I know there'll be something I can put them in. Yes. And here it is. Uh, now the awesome thing is I've actually got somewhere here, I've got adapters that will bolt these seats. Look, it'll bolt these seats yes. to the BMW rails. Oh, nice. So you can still use the forward and back action of the actual original rails. Did the seats cost $50,000, Martin? $1,000. For 14, both of them? 49 less, yeah. Dude, that's a bargain. For a whole inside of an Evo. That's a bargain. Mm. Where's the rest of it? In my shed. Oh, good. Taking up space. And it'll probably sit there for five years until it ends up going in the bin. Yeah, nice. I could All have right. used that seat. Um, anyway, so there they are. So we've got to uh, bolt them onto the original rails, but before we do that, we can yank the carpet out and put our safety gear in. Yeah, no, and get rid of the rear seats. Yeah. The rear seats will go back in, but will be a little less useful as there will be a half cage in the way. There has been some fairly serious moisture ingress issues into this old vehicle. Not that uncommon when rear seals shrink or giant rust holes allow water to get in. We're going to remove all of it and we'll get our hands on some brand new carpet a little later on once all our mods and testing is complete. Dave is using a pre-made LS specific loom which comes terminated with all the required plugs. It's just a matter of customising it to fit our E30 and some of the extra gadgets we have planned for this car. That is gross. Whoa, shit. There, look. Cockroaches. Yes, our car has a cockroach infestation. You never really know what's going on until you lift up the carpet. It's always a pleasant surprise at just how much of a car's stinkiness disappears when you remove seats and carpet. With a proper clean, we are back to a healthy sanitary canvas for our mods. To get our cage in, we'll need to drill the floor, so we're going to jack up the car and remove the wheels. With a car of this age, it's highly likely that you've got the curse of the aftermarket mods, um, which I love, actually, except when they're just not done 
neatly, um, you end up with an under dash area that's just full of a lot of stuff that's sort of being patched in one thing at a time. This is a good opportunity because we are going to be rewiring an ECU in to clean all that up and get rid of any of the junk, sort of neaten it up so your feet don't, because nothing worse than your feet getting caught up in all this rubbish. So I'm going to tidy that up, pull the last of the carpet out because it's full of cockroaches, dust and mould, and then get the wiring in. So with our interior removed, now we are ready to install our four-point bolt-in half cage. Now this here was made by AGI Roll Cages, proudly Australian made, which is excellent. Uh, they've made cages for uh, race teams, for Hollywood movies, and they do all the cages and bars for our cars as well. This is a bolting kit, which means we don't need to weld stuff, which is excellent, and there's minimal uh, holes that need to be drilled into the car. This one also has a harness bar with eyelets here as well, so that potentially, you know, we can run harnesses at some point in the future. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready to place it in? Let's cage it up. There are more than 30 different variations of cage for this car because BMW made so many different body styles and trim levels. Sedans, coupes, sunroof, no sunroof, every spec level requires small changes. By using a bolt-in cage we get the safety benefits for track days and drifting but it can also be removed easily if we want to use the rear seats and there's only a few small holes to patch up. The cage comes in two parts which are then bolted together once they're fed in through the side doors. It's then aligned, marked, drilled and bolted down. This is a super easy install. I'm installing a bracket for our throttle pedal. Now the original E30 throttle was cable and floppy and horrible. Um, so I'm quite happy to be replacing it with this electronic throttle, which is a GM unit out of a Commodore. Got quite a short throw, but because of the length of that sort of lever, it should have a really nice feel. And due to that nice bracket that the Brintec boys whipped up, it'll sit there. We'll balance up the heights of our brakes and clutch pedal and stuff like that. The plug goes on like that, connects up to the Haltech. Interestingly, that is the same plug as a Holden Astra and an R35, not a Skyline. An R35. GTR, mate. GTR. Don't get it wrong, whatever you do. Not an R35 Skyline. Anyway, who cares? This is a V8. We don't care about Skylines today. Or R35s. Oh. Along with installing my mad modern throttle pedal, I'm also continuing my mission of removing as much hacked in wiring as I can find. This is a precaution to help prevent electrical gremlins when we start adding in new mods. We will need to make some new main power supply and ground cables to go from the battery to the starter, ignition and other associated systems. We're also testing the fan to make sure it spins the correct way and when we know it's right, we can start feeding the loom into the engine bay from the cabin using the factory ECU hole. We're hoping to get the engine started today and to do that we need to make sure all of the fluids are ready to go. A stock LS3 runs over 7 litres of engine oil and with our aftermarket sump we'll be running even more again. We're running the factory specified 5W30 weight as it's a stock engine pushing stock power and handy for us Castrol Edge make a 10 litre bottle for just this purpose. The engine oil's done so now we can plug in all the connectors on the engine loom. The old six 31 years old, the foam's a bit saggy and more importantly it's smelly, uh, so it needs to go. I have an Evo 8 MR seat which is only about 15 years old and just a lot nicer, it's had an easier life. I can actually adapt one onto the other using these adapter rails, which means I can use the original E30 rails to have the fore and aft adjustment, everything bolts in, super safe and super easy. Better seats like a better steering wheel can transform your driving experience. Before I bolt up my new adapters, I'm going to clean up the factory sliders. While I'm waiting for them to dry off, I'm going to install a new fuel pump into the back of the car. Lucky for us, this later model fuel hanger system will accept some of the most common fuel pumps available on the market with only a few small mods. The fuel system of this car is fairly typical of this era with a high pressure line, low pressure return and a vent all making their way from the rear of the car into the engine bay. That's actually a bit different to the setup these engines are typically expecting, so we will need to do some modifications. The 
pump is a little bit tricky to get back into the tank, but with it in place, we can sort out the wiring to the back of the car and sort out the filter and fuel pressure regulator. One of the benefits of putting an LS into a car like this is all the interesting available parts. This is a filter and pressure regulator out of some kind of Corvette as I understand it. Uh, the good thing about this is we can actually replace the stock E30 fuel filter that's under there with a unit that is both the filter and the pressure regulator to make sure the engine gets exactly the kind of fuel pressure that it needs to run properly. It's just a really nice, neat solution. We also only need one fuel line going up to the engine because it's like a deadhead system. All the return happens back here. Uh, so I've got some adapters and plugs to sort of make that work and I just Lego it together and um, the fuel pump's in. So with this in as well, we've got fuel pressure ready to start the motor. We've made heaps of progress today. Dave is almost finished wiring in the whole car. We're just doing a fuel pump now, which took a little bit of fiddling around to get to work. Um, my fuel regulator is almost in as well, but I got tripped up. There's a particular fitting that I don't have because it's a specific GM one. I thought I had the right bits, so I don't. So I've got to wait overnight for that to arrive. But everything else is looking really good. It's all just sort of plugging in. And once this engine has fuel and has spark from our computer, we put some fluids in anything that needs some fluids, some coolant, stuff like that. This thing will be ready to start, so we're gonna come back tomorrow, clean up, and hit it again. It is a new day, and we're kicking off with renewed enthusiasm because today we are gonna be turning the key. The first thing we've gotta do is get the interior sorted. The treated seat rails can be installed, and with the help of Dave, then we can plug everything in, ready to start the car for the first time. A very very exciting part of the build because we are getting ready to start this car a new battery is going in look at these terminals that have been made by our friend Dave just look at them go so battery is going in Martin you got an ECU I do. there's a dash there's a seat to go in and then I do believe we are very very close computer and a dash which will display everything that's going on with the car because most of the um, gauges didn't work and never did on this car. So dash up there where the old one is, computer in there to plug in all the wiring that Dave's done, and we're good to go. Fuel system's all connected as well with all this stuff. Filters in there, we're gonna put a funnel bucket in there and slowly feed coolant into it as well and hope that nothing leaks out. The price of era-specific aftermarket seats like Recaro's has exploded in recent times, so using OEM seats out of a car that came with them is a way to save a few thousand dollars on good condition, good quality seats that you can run with a harness. Our rear seat won't quite fit with the roll cage in the way, so I'm going to trim back some of the foam from inside of it. The cloth trim will remain in place so it doesn't look hacked and it will slot neatly around the cage. It is nearly time to start this thing, so while the last remaining bits of electronic wizardry are being sorted out, we can fill our big engine with some H2O and some red coolant. We found a spare steering wheel in the garage, so that's going on the car. And next up, it's time to log into the ECU and breathe this thing into life. I need to run through the setup of all the functions for the ECU, including the electronic throttle, which seems to be working perfectly.
So we've been running through all the different diagnostics to make sure that everything is perfect. And now we're putting the intake on and then we're turning the key. We're firing it up. No idea if it's going to work. Um, the LS we haven't seen running. Um, it's been completely transplanted into a completely different car, um, different cooling system, different fuel system, different everything system really, including the engine management, which is up in front of me now with a diagnostics page where we can see oil pressure, um, all the stats of where the throttle blade is and how much air it's getting and all that kind of stuff. Um, we haven't cranked it. We don't know if it's going to even crank. Um, Dave's done an amazing job wiring it all up um, into this old car. So I think it's time to hit the key and see what happens. Okay, so turning the key, you'll hear the fuel pump prime, but we've actually got the injectors turned off because we don't want the engine to run straight away. We want to build some oil pressure because we mess with the sump and the pickup and the way that the oil filter works. So we've got a display here for oil pressure. We've got a sensor in there that's telling us what's going on. And now we crank it and hope that that number goes up to a safe level. And if it does, then we can run it. So here we go. Our new sump, new oil pickup and remote filter and the fact the engine has been completely emptied of oil means it can take quite a bit of cranking to get good oil pressure. And the engine has to have enough pressure to run without grinding itself into metal dust. Every engine is different, but we want to be well into double digits before we consider adding fuel so the engine will start and run. That oil pressure is starting to climb, that's a really good sign. Here we go, one more. Yeah, double digits! This is it, people. This is what we have been working towards. Yep. It's LS3 in the E30. First attempt. We're doing it? It never starts on the first time anyway. We're doing it? No, we're, we, we're gonna do it, man. Have faith we're do it. in everything, the V8. Everything is set up. We should have fuel pressure, we have oil pressure. It might just start. It might be rough, but it's gonna go. It never starts the first time. I'm anyway. really nervous. But I'm just trying to stall. I'm really nervous. We're do doing it. it. Doing it? Do it. Here we go. Yeah, dude! Yes! yes. Oh. Oh. Bit smoky back there, we might turn that off for now. Well, <laughs> yeah. it is as lumpy as can be. Elbow me, dude! Yes! Oh, yes. As lumpy as can be, but it started. It's a running V8 E30, dude. Thanks, David. You freaking legend. Oh, he gets double, double doodle. Yeah, man. Amazing. Now we do the boring stuff, we run it, we sit it there, we make it do the thing, we bubble the thing, we bleed the thing, we do the thing, we do the thing, then we rev it and do a big skid. There is still so much to do though. So much to do, that's Look okay. at it, this is, I mean, it's far from a finished car. No, but it's, it's got close. no wheels on it. It's the wheels got, are coming. It's got so much more to do, Martin. It's all right, don't worry about it. I have a late night, everyone Did this just get like relax. bigger than you thought it was gonna get? They right. always are bigger than we but thought But only because it got better also. That's true. Better than I ever could have thought. Like, look at it. It's in there, it's angry, and it makes rawr, rawr noises. Yes. Like an angry old dog. All right, Martin. Rawr. Let's move on. Rawr, rawr. Wheels. Set up the suspension. Yep. We've got to put the bonnet on. The put the grill not on. Gonna fit, is make it? It, no, probably have not. Have a look? Make it look, look like a car. Here. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's, it's seriously make it look like the car two again. inches further. It looks great, man. Goes. I'm so stoked. It looks awesome without a bonnet. That's great. Hopefully, we can run it like this. Yes! Celebratory kebab. Celebratory kebab? Mm. Oh no, we should do all the work. We should continue working. What, is it, what do V8 people eat? Dagwood dogs. Do they? Chip on a stick. Chip, a chip on, a, on stick. a stick? They're so good, especially when they have the cheese <laughs> Let's salt Let's go on get them. a chip on a stick. Where do you get a chip on a stick From the at this fair. time of night? What From carnival? The carnival.